Hey y'all, so ProQuest season is over and we're coming on to a Blitz skirmish season next, so it's time for some Blitz games. So here, in this video I have two games, um, both of them it's me on Visrai versus my friend on Reinar, and yeah, let's see how it goes. So my Reinar opponent went first uh, in this game number one, and we are getting high rolled, which seems to be the name of the game in Blitz nowadays. So this claw is coming in for 11, unless I block with two or more non-equipment cards. But since three of my cards got intimidated, I can only potentially block with one card. So I choose to not block with a Sonata, even though I know I would draw up again, just because I think Sonata is worth way more than two damage. And then, yeah, on our turn, uh, we did have a decent opening hand, so that's very nice. Uh, get to Morbin Skies and come in with a Red Shrill. So this Red Shrill is 7 damage. We still have 1 floating to swing Rosetta. Okay, then my opponent blocks out the Red Shrill. Yeah, makes sense, because on hit would have created me 2 additional rune chance. Also, our opponent blocking that tells us they don't have another really good high roll turn on their side, so we're feeling good about keeping the Sonata. Although I think, yeah, that's the thing. If they had a really good high roll turn again, whether we blocked with Sonata or not on turn one wouldn't have made much of a difference. But in the case that they don't, having the Sonata potentially can win us the game. So further reason why I didn't block with it on turn one. Cool, and then we use the last floating to Rosetta for a total of five. My opponent is not running any Arcane Barrier. They were trying to, you know, play a very aggressive Rhyna build into Visrai. Uh, basically, they were testing whether, you know, they could potentially play for rolling higher than we high roll them. So far, it's been working well for them. I mean, taking 11 on turn 1 is definitely a very good high roll. Cool. And we go ahead and Arsenal at Sonata. Alright, and then we draw up into Moderate Tide, Rebel, and Runeblood, so we're feeling really good. So looking at this hand, the ideal thing I'd like to do is Moderate Tide and then play Become the Arc Knight and actually not discard anything to it. The whole point is just to create two rune chants of a Viserai. Pop the Quill Hand. Uh, now we're at five rune chants. And then pop Skeletor and play the Sonata from Arsenal, pitching our Spellblade Assault into it as well. Uh, probably just one from the Spellblade Assault, so we're floating two. That means we reveal six cards from Sonata and we hold on to the Rebel in Runeblood to activate the creepers to get an action point back in case you know we find a ninth blade or like just a really big uh attack from the sonata that doesn't naturally have go again so that's what i want to do i'm, I'm hoping i can just use my fridge to survive uh, what my opponent's going to do you know we have i have four block uh, knock hunting creepers and with two cards it's unlikely my opponent can you know, present lethal anyway so then they pop Cross Trap and Glide Gauntlet and come in CNC for eight. So that definitely puts a wrench in my plan. So then, so at this point, I need to figure out a new plan, which is like because the CNC is coming in for eight, it's I can't block it out without losing at least two cards from my hand, uh, along with the fridge. So at that point, I figure it's probably better to actually just lose the Sonata in my arsenal and then use Become the Arc Knight to find Sonata. Yep, yeah, so that's exactly what I do. I just block with my two, uh, my Skullcap and Skeletor. Just block four of it, lose my Sonata. I get my Skullcap value now while I'm still lower than my opponent and I'm going to pop Skeletor on my turn, so also get that value. Okay, then you go Modred and we use Become to find Sonata since the one in arsenal got destroyed. Then we go ahead and place Sonata. X is two, because yeah, uh, X is two and uh, Visrai triggers. Um, yeah, definitely not pitching into us because we want to keep this rebel. X is two, so we reveal five cards and we get two attacks from it, so that's very nice. Opponent takes two arcane, and it would have been nice to be able to use the Skeletor discount on the attack action as well. So if the Swarming Gloomville was a blue or a yellow. I could have done 
Trill of Skull Form, and then Creepers are the Revel and still have one floating for Rosetta. But because I didn't, I need to rely on the go again from Swarming Gloomvale and then pitch my red Shrill to come with the Rosetta. Okay, so my opponent blocks out the Gloomvale and then we go ahead and revel and this becomes 9 and then we just thorn for 13 and my opponent doesn't have Arcane Bearer so they just die. I mean technically they have Skullcap Arcane Bearer but it's not, yeah, even if they have 3 blues in hand they won't be able to block enough rune shots. Yeah, so that was game 1. <laughs> like I said, Blitz just seems to be like a very high roll format right now. Like a lot of the games, like you know, it's when, like Reina, Vishrai are involved games just end by turn two uh actually arguably yeah kano as well right so yep on to game number two so this is game number two and this time we've switched up this time i went first and my opponent on rhino went second uh we draw this hand and this would be an awesome hand going second because then we can we mob skies play blue shrill pitching lead the charge and slap one floating for rosetta going first this hand is not that good Drawing Rattle Bones in your opening hand is is extremely awkward. You know, you have no valid targets. There's no way for me to get rid of this Rattle Bones. Since we no longer run Grasp, uh, I can't, you know, pitch Rattle Bones to anything except Rosetta. So that's what I do. And it's, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because it, it lets my opponent filter. But I figured that them filtering is less bad than holding on to this pointless rattle bones. Of course, there was the argument that I just do Morven Skies, pitch, uh, lead the charge to Shrill and also Rosetta, so I'll probably leak in some damage as well. But I'm le still left with this rattle bones in hand. Or I could, yeah, so I could double pitch, like pitch rattle bones and pitch lead the charge afterwards, like over pitch to play the Shrill and Rosetta. So I leak some damage, but then I don't get an arsenal. So that felt really bad to me. What feels better to me is arsenaling the red Morven Skies. So, yep, I came in the Rosetta. And my opponent actually decides not to block it. So, yeah, well, I guess, yeah, now I regret, you know, not doing the Marvin Skies Shrill of Skullform line. Uh, clearly, my opponent has like a god hand they want to keep. So, yep, starts with a red barraging. That sounds about right. And then they come in with a pulping. Cool. And they discard a card with six of our attack. So we intimidate again. And then pulping has dominate. Um, and if I defend with fewer than two non-equipment cards, it has go again. But since it has dominate and I don't run defense reactions, you know, it definitely has the go again. And the barraging beat done plus four as well. So this is ten. So just looking at what we're doing next turn, now we can do the Red Marvin Skies, Pitch to Play, Blue Shrill, and Still Rosetta afterwards. So that's a three card hand. So ideally I would like to uh, Arsenal uh, one of the two Marvin Skies I have. So since I have one currently intimidated away, I just block with my other Marvin Skies. And I still have the one in Arsenal, which is what I'm going to play. And then my opponent forgoes their arsenal to claw me, which is definitely quite aggressive, but they pitch a reckless swing, which I guess they didn't think would matter. So, yep. Yeah. So I'm feeling quite all right at this point. Like my opponent didn't get an arsenal, so I was just playing off the top four cards of the deck. Uh, even though I didn't, a uh, blue shrill, it's, it's all right. Uh, obviously some red attack would have been nicer. Um, and my opponent just takes this, so that's actually terrifying because they just let me get three extra rune chance. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way I can punish this. So potentially, you know, if they were two life lower, what I could do is just play this Marvin Skies from my hand to get an extra rune chance of Visrai and pop Quill Hand, bringing bring me up to seven rune chance. So then when I swing the Rosetta, it's lethal. So I force a card on my opponent's hand. Uh, unfortunately, yep, they, they weren't uh, low enough. For me to do that and yep all is explained when they start with a blood rush bellow yep 
they go ahead and discard Swing Big. We get intimidated, they draw two. And <laughs> they, they drew into a second Blood Rush Bellow. So, yeah, so that's basically game. Uh, double Blood Rush Bellow means that each claw is now coming in for seven. So, yeah, that's not even counting any other attack they might have still with the Heart and Cross Trap. So, yep, they activate a Cross Trap. Um, they do that first so that the chain doesn't break. Like, if they swing with claws and then pop the cross trap, you know, the chain gets broken, which would potentially let me block again with Skeletor. Uh, but they're good players, so, you know, they do it first, and then they do the double claw. Um, I take the first claw because then my skull cap is active, and now I can block with it. Although, I mean, you know, they, they just do one more attack after this, and we're dead. So, still, I mean, still good to be efficient, even if you know you're about to die. Yep, so I go ahead and block 6, uh, and then come in with Swing Big, which is coming in for 12, so there's no way block this. So, there we go. Uh, two really quick Blitz games. Um, two very high rolly decks that, I mean, both games actually ended on turn 2. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, both players only got two turns in each game. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a little sad that this is, this, it feels like this is what Blitz has come down to. Just, you know, who high rolls a little better. Uh, yeah, cards like Vexing Quill Hand, obviously, just it's, it's insane in Blitz. I mean, it's, arguably, it's insane in CC as well. But yeah, in Blitz, you know, it's it's amplified because these players just at twenty. So yeah, two very quick Blitz games for you guys. Hope you enjoyed that. And my opponent is actually the owner of the YouTube channel called Techlo Foundry. So if you want to watch these two matches from the Reiner side, go ahead and check out the channel. They're very good player, solid person just great content all around. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and hope you enjoyed it.